By plane and by automobile, hundreds of people are heading back home after the long holiday weekend. We'll have a live report. Plus, there's a campaign to rename the northwest part of the valley. If you live in the area, you can have a say in the matter. We'll show you how. And it may soon be a little more difficult for teenagers to get a driver's license here in Nevada. Find out what lawmakers have planned. You're watching Eyewitness News at 6 with Gary Waddell, Paula Francis, and Kevin Janison. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Gilbert in for Gary Waddell. And I'm Colleen May in for Paula Francis. Thousands of revelers packed the strip last night to ring in the new year. The party lasted until well past midnight, but when the partying stopped, that's when the cleanup began. An army of street cleaners, as you can see here, took to the streets, picking up an estimated 175,000 pounds of garbage. About 4,000 barriers covering a two and a half mile stretch of the road were also picked up. The cleanup was all finished by 3.30 this morning. Now that the holiday weekend is winding down, many people are heading back home. You are looking at a live picture of Interstate 15 southbound from Chopper 8. What a mess. Many visitors came from California to ring in the new year here in the valley. And as you can see, traffic is bumper to bumper on I-15. Nevada Highway Patrol says right now it's a 10-hour drive from here to Los Angeles. Traffic should be back to normal later this evening. We hope you can get up-to-date road conditions by tuning in to AM radio station 1610, or you can call the Nevada Department of Transportation toll-free road hotline at 1-877-687-6237. Thousands of people are also headed home by airplane, and that means going through McCarran International Airport this evening. Eyewitness News is live. Renata Troiani. Standing by at McCarran with that part of the story. Renata. John, 120,000 people have gone through McCarran today. Number wise, that's a pretty typical day for McCarran. Outside, the lines are long. Inside, people are frustrated. We've been waiting here for a little over three and a half hours. Sam All and his family have been waiting in this line for hours. They were supposed to be back home in Louisville by tonight, but because of a busy holiday schedule and a canceled flight, they won't be back home until Wednesday morning. If we had anticipated something like this, we certainly wouldn't have come to Las Vegas because I'm scheduled to be back at work tomorrow. My wife is a school teacher. She is scheduled to be back to work also. Some passengers have breezed through long lines. We expect the crowds anticipate what's going on, allow extra time. Others say airline excuses from weather to crew problems could make their first day of 2001 their worst. So they're trying to get us on another airline and then transfer us in L.A. to another airline to get us back to Miami by 6.30 in the morning so I can be at work at 8.30 in the morning. That's hell. Excuse my friends, but that's what it is. Now, some workers here at McCarran think that tomorrow is going to be even busier today. If you plan on flying out of McCarran, best bet, call ahead. Renata Troiani, Eyewitness News, live. Thanks, Renata. It's become as much of a New Year's tradition as drinking champagne. Making New Year's resolutions is something that thousands of Valley residents do every year. So how are they doing this first day of 2001? Andrea Bond takes a look. 43-year-old Cynthia Dick has big plans for 2001. She just joined the gym and wants to be fit to run a marathon by the end of the year. This is a big one. This is running, getting in fit, and coming here every morning, every day, to try to shape up and just do it. But when it comes to keeping those New Year's resolutions, there's one thing more important than sheer physical strength. And that's strength of mind, something not a lot of people have. Every year that I've made them, I broke them. So, and that everybody I know makes them, breaks them. So that's, that's why I'm not going to make any. It's fun to say you're going to do this or that, but I don't think everyone pays much attention to it after the year is here. But that aside, New Year's wouldn't really be the same without resolutions. So we keep making them year after year. Uh, calm down on smoking. Probably quit. And drinking. And work harder. Just the walking, this one. And the step. Stepping. Yeah. And then I try to eat protein, no carbohydrates. And although breaking those resolutions is almost always easier than making them, that doesn't mean you should give up. If it helps, you can just think of your goal as a change in lifestyle. The whole diet thing and exercise, I need to do that anyway, so if I don't call it a resolution, I don't have as much pressure. Whatever you call it, this is your chance for a fresh start. But don't worry, if it doesn't happen this year, you can always look ahead to the next. Andrea Bond, Eyewitness News. And if you still have resolutions to make, experts recommend keeping them simple, writing them down, and keeping a progress report. 
Rollover crash involving a taxi claimed the life of one woman last night. It happened about 9.30 last night at Paradise and Desert Inn. Police say a taxi cab driver cut off a car, swerved, and hit the median and rolled over. You're looking at video that was taken last night from Chopper 8. Woman passenger in the taxi cab was thrown out of the cab and pronounced dead on the scene. The cab driver has been arrested for involuntary manslaughter. Another accident happened at about 9 this morning on Cheyenne Road. Police say two minivans, both carrying groups of people, collided when one of the vans tried to make a left-hand turn. One person was taken to UMC with minor injuries. What's in a name? Plenty, according to people who live in the rapidly growing northwest part of the valley. They're in the middle of a campaign to find a name for that part of town. Eyewitness News is live with Tom Jones. He's near Centennial Parkway and Ann Road with more. Tom? That's right, Colleen. The campaign uh, to find a name for this area is winding down. Some of the names that are left on the list get uh, a big thumbs down and frowns. But there are some other names on the list that people out here say make plenty of sense. When it comes to naming their fast-growing northwest area, people feel one way or the other about the 11 names left on the list. Vista del Sol, Sheep Mountain, Vista, and Vista Verde are names people turn their noses up at. Nope. <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't sound like Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Montecito. No. Councilman Michael Mack is looking for a name for this area, a name everyone will recognize, like Summerlin or Green Valley. Some of the names people like are Tule Springs and Centennial Village. I think Centennial because you are right by Centennial. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to find, right, if you have the, the name of the area. Makes sense to me. Not to everybody. Quite a few people like Arrow Canyon. Well, there's history behind it. Whereas Centennial Village and all that, they just sound boring. Beverly Blasky yeah. is on the committee that will pair the names down to two. She's glad to see that everyone is getting into the naming of the Northwest. But I think it's been a good process because the, the, the citizens of the Northwest have kind of pulled together and really thought about it. And Now here's what will happen next. Uh, the committee will decide on two of the 11 names and that's when the public will get a chance to vote on those two names, the names that they like the best. The name that winner will be officially called the Northwest. Uh, that name will officially be the one name of the Northwest, excuse me. Tom Jones, Eyewitness News, live. Thanks very much, Tom. Most of us looked forward to turning 16 because that meant we got a driver's license, but Nevada is considering making it more difficult for teens to drive. We'll show you how coming up. But first, Kevin Janison joins us with a first look at weather for 2001. Kevin? Hi, John. Looks like every day this year is going to be like what we sample today. Wouldn't that be nice, huh? We'll take a look at your seven-day forecast, which has some good stuff in it, and we'll take a look at all the neighborhood weather, too. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Eyewitness News, though, will be back in 60 seconds. You're watching Eyewitness News with Paula Francis and Gary Waddell. Would you like smoking or drinking or maybe cut down on how much you eat? Well, the new year is an excellent time to kick an old habit. Psychologist Dr. Steve Brody shows us how. Sun Street Center's outpatient. How can I help you? Sam Ackerman knows how to kick a habit. He gave up drinking and drugs and now helps Excellent. others do the uh, same. Do He's also trying to quit smoking. Afternoon. I get a lot of cravings. Um, when I have that, just as if it were alcohol or drugs, I'm taking the same bent with that. that. That urge will pass. This too shall pass. Which is tip number one if you want to kick a habit. Consider a 12-step program and its belief in a higher power. Also, set realistic goals. And when you do slip, get right back on the wagon again. Slip-ups are inevitable. It's how you handle them that counts. So rather than beat yourself up about them, expect an occasional slip-up, learn from it, and then make a conscious decision to get back on the wagon with renewed determination. Also, take it one day at a time by setting daily goals. Get support from others, like a support group, for instance, and change your environment. The expression is if you go to a barber shop enough, you'll get a haircut. Uh, I don't want to be in that situation, so I'm choosing to be away from those areas right now. But it is daily. Hey, Jess, how are we doing? 
His colleague, Jess Calderon, agrees. Okay. Tell me with whom you walk and I will tell you who you are. If you hang around with people that drink or use drugs or smoke and you're trying to quit, it's not going to help as easily as it is to find an environment which is going to support it, where guys are, have quit themselves, especially. Good advice if you want to kick an old habit for the new year. Dr. Steve Brody for CBS News. Experts also suggest that you put balance into your life by exercising, getting enough sleep, and having some fun. Leeches have been used for medical purposes for thousands of years. Researchers at the University of Virginia have invented a mechanical leech that they say is even better at initiating blood flow and reducing tissue swelling. The mechanical leech consists of a two-inch square plexiglass box that holds a series of hypodermic needles attached to a tiny vacuum pumping system. That system draws blood into a small, replaceable reservoir. It will be marketed under the name Smart Bandage. Within the hustle and bustle of the Big Apple, many folks feel isolated and lonely. In this season of giving, the city of New York reaches out to the elderly and serves up a plate of good cheer. Frank Buckley has that story. <laughs> it isn't just a meal being delivered to Betty Godfrey. This is a serving of kindness. You put this in water and it'll grow. Ms. Godfrey lives alone, much of the time in pain the pills and the cane for the osteoporosis, the arthritis. But these stairs leading up to her apartment make it all but impossible to leave it for the daily dignities like going out for a walk most of us take for granted. I never, you know, thought things would go the way they have and, and that I'd have the physical problems that I have. Loneliness among them, especially on holidays like New Year's Day. Never used to, you know, be here alone on the holidays either. I'd have friends in, or I'd go, go away, you know, uh, visiting or something like that. But uh, it, it's difficult during the holidays. The meal delivered to the 78-year-old Ms. Godfrey from New York's City Meals on Wheels program. Hot meals cooked fresh a few blocks away, a public-private partnership providing the funding. Those providing the service very aware their mission is about more than delivering food to homebound seniors. And we make an extra effort to bring them not just a hot, nutritious meal, um, but, but something extra that, that shows them that they have not been forgotten. Ms. Godfrey, who has no children, has lived alone for more than 30 years. She still loves a good laugh, and often the Meals on Wheels delivery person is the only person she'll see on a given day with whom she can share one with. Sometimes days is the only person I see is the meal man. <laughs> um, so it, uh, I guess it gives me some contact with the outside world, right? A human connection that ensures Ms. Godfrey will not begin this new year alone. It's very nice of you to do this. Frank Buckley, Siena, New York. Kevin's here with a look at weather. We showed a little bit earlier all those people headed out of town. All those people who came for New Year's, I mean, we're lucky. Our weather was fantastic. Yeah, well, I mean, that's normally our mode of operanda, and they'll yeah. probably be back if they can endure the traffic heading Ooh. on their way back to Southern California. It's a good thing they're heading in that direction because if they were heading into the other part of the country, they would run into trouble. At 4 o'clock, we showed you Atlanta. 5 o'clock was Birmingham. Why not Nashville, Tennessee, and the snow that they had as well. Nashville, of course, a little farther to the north. Not all that unusual for them to get a little bit of snow, but... They still, they're not that used to it. It's a common occurrence, and here's all the traffic trouble as a result of the snow that fell there this morning. Let's begin here at home with real-time neighborhood weather. We'll begin at Lamping Elementary. That's the south end of the valley near Eastern and St. Rose Parkway. It's 50 degrees, some actual breeze blowing down there out of the south at 5 miles per hour. It has gusted to 9. We'll head on over to the far northwestern part of town, completely across the valley. 51 degrees and west-northwest at uh, 4 and 2 and bouncing around. No wind and cold air up in Mount Charleston. And down in Laughlin, 61 degrees and a light northerly breeze. Here are your high temperatures today, and they range anywhere from 51 on the mountain, 67 at the lake, Laughlin up to 69 degrees, and in town anywhere from the mid-60s on the west side to near 70 degrees on the near east side of the Las Vegas Valley. At McCarran today, the top temperature was 62. That's half a dozen above normal. 40 for the morning low, 8 degrees above normal. Must have been some leftover body heat from all the New Year's Eve celebrations. And here's what's going on with that unusual snow. Another, this is like the third one in the last week and a half that has hit parts of the country not used to it. All the way from North Carolina, across Tennessee, Kentucky, southern Indiana getting a, a dusting of snow as well. We'll weather flight ourselves right through the snow and the clouds and 
real close to the ground there, too, and some clouds in New Mexico, even Arizona, some high, thin clouds. The same clouds that went through our sky earlier today have pushed off to the east. In fact, they've dissipated somewhat as well. Certainly benign clouds, no precipitation out of those. What we're watching is the very powerful jet stream that is guiding all of the weather up into the western part of Canada. Then it goes up over the top and down through the midsection of the country. A couple of these clouds, some wimp, sheer, uh, wimp, innocent, not going to do any trouble type clouds will be shearing off the system and moving into California and Nevada. So by the middle of the week, we might get a couple of high clouds, but that's it. No precipitation and no significant wind over the next few days. Tonight, clear down to 37 degrees for the low temperature. Not much wind. Then tomorrow, plenty of sunshine. Another beautiful day. Now, there will be a northeasterly breeze 5 to 15 miles per hour in town tomorrow. If you really want to run into some stronger winds, you'll have to head up to the mountain. Even at the lake, there might be a couple of gusts over 20 miles per hour. Here's your seven-day extended forecast. And how about these numbers? Mid-60s through at least Thursday and maybe beyond backing off a little bit, and only a little bit as we head toward the weekend. Of course, you can keep up with all of your neighborhood weather at KLASTV.com. You can even download the weather bug, which puts the temperature of the neighborhood weather station nearest you right by the clock in the bottom right corner of your screen on the gray taskbar. Right. Nice little feature. Like that, yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Sports books are usually very busy on New Year's Day with college football fans betting on all the bowl games. But this year, not as many bowl games were played, and that means business at sports books were down. Eyewitness News photojournalist Brian Podner visited some local sports books to find out why. You know what it is? The challenge is to beat the odds maker. I love beating the odds man. That's what it is. You're beating the house, right? To beat the house is a pleasure. You want people to come here, enjoy themselves, and play the games, which is what, this is what Vegas is known for, the games. We've uh, done very well as far as the win and loss column. Uh, the action, however, today on New Year's Day has dropped dramatically over uh, compared to the last few years. Well, ever since the Bowl Championship Series uh, arrived three years ago, uh, they've really diluted the New Year's Day Bowl games. They've, they've really spread out all the games over uh, four or five days compared to one day. In the old days, we used to have about 11, 10, 11 games on New Year's Day, including the championship game. Now we only have six games, and that's not including the top two bowl games. Come on there. There you go. There we got it. I need this parlay bad. Oh, yeah, this is my first trip. I love it. You know, New Year's Day used to be the number two largest, second largest betting day in Nevada. Now we're going to probably drop that out of the, the top ten. If you look at number one, the Super Bowl, obviously that's the number one weekend. Number two is March Madness, and three is the first weekend of NFL on Labor Day. If this college betting ban does go through, this is not only going to hurt the sports books, it will hurt all of Las Vegas. Hotels, restaurants, the whole industry will be affected by this. It's not just a sports book issue, it's a Las Vegas and Nevada issue. Hmm. Big sports day and uh, man, a lot of bowl games, I guess, on town. Mm, lots and lots of bowl games. Biggest day of the year really for college football bowl game fans. The bowl championship series kicked off in Pasadena, California. Unfamiliar territory for those boiler makers. And will this guy turn pro? Boy, he's got the money waiting, but first things first. Sports is next right here on Channel 8. Well, the Rose Bowl had all the ingredients. Purdue hadn't been to the Granddaddy Bowl game since the 60s, and it's been eight years since Washington has played in the Rose Bowl. Well, an exciting game, second half with the Huskies leading by seven. Purdue's Drew Brees, second down and ten, throws to Vinny Sutherland, makes the over-the-shoulder catch for the touchdown. It's tied at 17. Washington back, leading by three now. Extends its lead to ten. Tuiasa Sopu throws to Todd Elstrom. Reaches high for the score. Now, if Miami can, the Huskies can make an argument for playing in the title game. They put this one away. The handoff to Willie Hurst, who fights his way into the end zone. Purdue trailing by 10. To have a chance, they needed to stop Washington on fourth and one. Huskies get the yards, and they get the win. New Heisel gets to Bath as Washington ends its season 11-1 with a 34-24 win over the Boilermakers. The other BCS Bowl game currently underway right now. Fifth-ranked Oregon State playing 10th-ranked Notre Dame right now. 6-0 Beavers with the lead, and they move into the second quarter. 
Outside the BCS, four of their bowl games played today, three of them in Florida. The Gator Bowl, Jacksonville, featured Virginia Tech and Clemson. When you talk about the Hokies, you talk about Michael Vick. The quarterback was on target again today following a turnover. First play from scrimmage for Tech and Vick goes to the end zone. Jared Ferguson, he wasn't throwing for 205 yards, he was running. Vick lights it up. He'll decide between now and January 12th whether or not to turn pro. As for now, Virginia Tech goes on to beat Clemson 41-20. It's the Tigers' fifth straight bowl loss. In the Cotton Bowl, it's Kansas State and Tennessee. Wildcats with the lead, but not for long. Clawson to David Martin in the end zone. It's tied at seven. K-State would never trail again, though. Jonathan Beasley to Quincy Morgan. Fingertip catch for the score. Vols coach Philip Fulmer said K-State took him behind the woodshed and spanked him. He's right. Wildcats finished their season 11-3 with a 35-21 win. What a job Lou Holtz has done for the Game Hawk, uh, Gamecocks. Or they're winless in 99. Now they're in the Outback in 2000. South Carolina, Ohio State, this will belong to the underdogs. Ryan Brewer, recruited by Ohio State, scored three touchdowns as the unranked Gamecocks beat the Buckeyes 24-7. From zero wins last year, eight wins this year. Remarkable turnaround in the SEC. From Orlando, Florida, it's the Citrus Bowl. Michigan, Auburn, scoreless in the first quarter. Wolverines on the move. Back to Drew Henson. Boy, this guy is a top pick of the Cincinnati Reds. He can also play a little football. Candy. 31-yard strike on the money. David Terrell, first in Big Blue history. Back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Tigers make it interesting, trailing by 10 in the fourth. DeAndre Green hauls in the touchdown pass, but it wasn't going to be enough. Wolverines win their fourth straight bowl game, 31-28. to how the A&M Aggies do? <laughs> that was a, you had to bring that up. That was a good game last <laughs> night, but uh, unfortunately they lost. But I was pulling for them. It was a good game. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. There is still more news straight ahead. The new millennium is officially here. Hundreds of thousands flocked to New York City's Times Square to ring in the new year. We'll show you more of the celebrations coming up. Plus, former California Senator Alan Cranston has passed away. We'll take a look back at his log and sometimes controversial career. And today is not only New Year's Day, it's the 200th anniversary of the emancipation of George Washington's slaves. Hear from the descendants of those slaves. Eyewitness News at 6.30 starts now. You're watching Eyewitness News at 6.30 with Gary Waddell, Paula Francis, Kevin Jennison, and Dave McCann. Crews in New York's Times Square worked all through the night cleaning up after last night's New Year's celebrations. Former heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali triggered the famous Times Square ball drop. At least half a million people crowded into Times Square to ring in the new year. More than 6,000 police were on hand for crowd control. They needed it to help maintain safety. City officials welded manhole covers shut and removed trash cans for added security. President-elect George W. Bush was back to work today, continuing his efforts to fill three remaining cabinet posts. Bush's next cabinet announcement is expected tomorrow. The positions still to be named are Secretary of Energy, Labor, and Transportation. Bush is also getting ready for an economic forum Wednesday and Thursday. Business executives, high-tech leaders, and Bush advisors will meet behind closed doors. On New Year's Day, while many are looking ahead, some political figures are also looking back, remembering former Senator Alan Cranston. The California Democrat died Sunday at the age of 86. Wolf Blitzer has more. Former California Senator Alan Cranston gained national prominence running for president in 1984 on a promise to end the nuclear arms race. Many Americans, I believe an overwhelming majority, share my concerns about a nuclear arms race that is undermining our economy and our society and threatening our very existence. He finished second to the eventual Democratic nominee Walter Mondale in an early straw poll, but failed to win a single primary and dropped out early. But Cranston was also one of the Keating Five, senators who were disciplined for trying to influence federal regulators on behalf of a campaign contributor, Lincoln Savings and Loan President Charles Keating. Cranston received the severest rebuke, a reprimand for conduct that was deemed, quote, improper and repugnant. He accepted the reprimand, but not without firing back at his colleagues. Since I have been singled out for a reprimand on access today, who among you can be sure you will not be singled out for a reprimand on access tomorrow? Here, but for the grace of God, stand you. Cranston called for campaign finance reform in language similar to last year's speeches by Senator John McCain, another member of the Keating Five. And I hope that my remarks will lead to reforms 
that the United States Senate desperately needs, not only for itself and for those who serve in the Senate, but to benefit the people of our country and lead to a more equal voice for all the people of our country in the actions we take. Cranston maintained he had done nothing wrong, but said he was sorry for the pain the scandal had caused. I apologize because there was an appearance of wrongdoing that turned out, despite my best intentions, to do damage to me, to bring anguish to my family and my friends, my supporters, my Senate staff, and since it cast reflections upon me, it cast reflections upon the Senate. Craston retired in 1993, citing ill health. He mostly dropped out of public view, continuing his work against nuclear weapons. Alan Cranston died Sunday at his home in Los Altos, California, at age 86. Wolf Blitzer, CNN, Washington. The death toll could continue to climb from a cafe fire in the Netherlands. Police say at least eight people were killed and about 130 people were injured. Many were hurt after they smashed windows and jumped from the third floor to escape the flames. The cafe is in a fishing town north of Amsterdam. A series of explosions erupted in a resort town in Israel today. At least 54 people were injured, one of them seriously. Police spokesman said the bombs had been planted in a car. Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak called his security cabinet into emergency session to discuss the incident. Israel has been hit by a number of bombings since violence erupted three months ago. Militant Palestinian groups have vowed to carry out additional attacks. At least six people are dead and dozens more missing after a cargo ship carrying illegal immigrants sank off the coast of Turkey. At least 83 people were on board when the sh on the ship when it split into two. One half sank, the other drifted towards the rocky shore. All the passengers were illegal immigrants trying to make their way to Greece. Survivors say many of the illegal immigrants were locked in the cargo area located in the sunken half of the ship. Today marks the 200th anniversary of the emancipation of George Washington's slaves. Washington freed his slaves in his will and hoped that other owners would follow his lead, but they didn't, and many families of slaves were separated as a result. Bruce Morton spoke with some of their descendants. At George Washington's house, a very American ceremony. Honoring the memory of those people who built Mount Vernon, who worked its fields, who maintained it, and who very much made it what it is today. She means its slaves, 316 of them when Washington died. They worked its fields, tended its animals, shot its horses, wove its cloth. Washington freed his when he died 200 years ago. Others, his wife's from a previous marriage, could not be freed under Virginia law. Slaves like Caroline, who was there when Washington died. Anyone that could survive those times in American history deserves all the dignity and honor that we can give her. And I promised to give my Caroline that. I hope visitors a day go away understanding more the lives of the individual slaves who worked here. And, and not just looking at slaves as a group, but looking at the individual people who had different jobs, different talents, different families, different needs that lived here in the 18th century. We can see where they worked, see the face of one at least. Washington at the end of his life did what he could, but freeing some meant split families, meant sorrow for others. We're here today 200 years later to say, hey, hey America, wake up, pay attention, and give recognition to the fact that these men and women toiled, and we have to stop and give them a moment of recognition and put them at peace. I hope that you all feel as I do, a sense of joy, a sense of sadness, but always hope that the efforts of good people will always be remembered. And the small crowd laid bits of boxwood on the memorial. Joy and sadness and remembrance. A very American ceremony. Bruce Morton, CNN, Mount Vernon. Shoppers in Greece will soon have a new currency to get used to. We'll tell you about it coming up. Also ahead, many are concerned about a London landmark and who will take care of it in the new millennium. More on that next.
It was a very lucky New Year's Eve for a woman gambling in Laughlin last night. Karen Beverly won nearly $7 million on a Wheel of Fortune machine at the Edgewater Casino. She says a friend told her to try that particular machine because she had a good feeling about it. See what they say about those intuitions? You can <laughs> yeah. win. Beverly put only $100 and hit the jackpot after losing $41. She says she's going to buy a PT Cruiser, put some of it away for her grandson's college, and of course... She says she's going to get a good tax lawyer as well. Good attorney is always important. Kevin, we hit the jackpot on some nice weather, huh? Yes, we did, but we don't need a tax attorney at this point. <laughs> Maybe toward the end of the year we'll be looking for a few deductions. Let's begin in Prim for all of our friends that are on their way back to Southern California. 48 degrees down there at Buffalo Bills right now. A light breeze at 3 miles per hour and 29% relative humidity. Back in the valley near Charleston and Torrey Pines at the Community College, it's 54, a gentle westerly breeze blowing. In Pahrump, 44 and calm right now. And we'll head back up to North Las Vegas where it's 53 degrees and calm. Temperatures in neighborhoods around town, it's 49 at the zoo, 44 in Summerlin, 50 in Green Valley. Outside the valley, it is 30 on the mountain, 50 at Red Rock. 51 in Boulder City. Here are your peak wind gusts for the day. Now we think we might see a little more wind tomorrow. Certainly nothing extensive, but mainly around the edges, the only areas that had wind in double digit miles per hour. It's been that calm of a day. Outside the valley, we can always count on searchlight. They had a gust to 27, Laughlin with a gust to 23. Highs ranged anywhere from 51 on the mountain, excuse me, 69 in Laughlin at our weather station at Bennett Elementary, and in town, mid-60s to about 70 degrees on the near east side of the valley. Around the west today, some cold air when you travel northward. Elko, after a morning low of 5, had a high of 39. Salt Lake City only at 25 today. Denver hit 35. Downtown L.A., very mild at 76. San Francisco hit a high temperature of 58, while Reno topped out at 49. We were talking earlier about the snow in unusual places. Still going on in parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, even West Virginia. Not that unusual for those folks, but things are beginning to simmer down tonight, so not as much snow as what we saw this morning. We had a few high clouds today. Very, very weak area of high pressure in the West. It's a dirty area of high pressure. That's what we call it when the high clouds are able to protrude through that. However, there are more high clouds out here, but most of the action continues to head way up to the north. A few of these renegades will make their way into our sky, but they will be few and far between. We've got some pretty nice weather here over the next few days. Your forecast first for tonight, clear sky, 37 degrees for the low temperature. Not much wind tonight, occasionally a burst to maybe 5 or 10 miles per hour, and that's it. Plenty of sunshine tomorrow. Look for a high of 64 degrees, a northeasterly breeze of 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now, in the higher elevations up on the mountain and out of the lake, once you get out of the valley, uh, there will be a little more wind, maybe a gust or two to 20, possibly even 30 miles per hour. But we're not expecting that, at least at this point, in town. A look ahead at your seven-day extended forecast. Highs in the mid-60s. Overnight lows generally in the mid to upper 30s. Few clouds come into the picture as we get ready for the weekend, but that's about the only thing coming into the picture. We are in a cruise control type weather zone here, and that should last for the next few days. And you know what? Nobody's complaining. <laughs> it's pretty nice out there. Yeah. Thanks very much, Kevin. A lot of people probably not even enjoying the weather, but inside today, watching what, six, six bowl games? Six bowl yeah. games today. Lots of action today. I'll tell you what, today it's the mother load of all bowl games. We'll check in on the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Huskies have a pretty good argument. I'll show you why. And Utah coach Rick Majerus enters a Utah hospital. I'll tell you why. Coming up next in sports. Well, the Rose Bowl ended up being a pretty good ball game. In case you missed those earlier highlights, let's take you right now to the fourth quarter. Washington leading Purdue, first and goal. Huskies attack to Iyasa Sopo, the toss of Todd Elstrom. Suddenly, it's a 10-point game. Huskies add some more. They really start to pull away when Willie Hurst charges in from seven yards out, 34-17. But the border makers refuse to lose. Cedric Brown takes a ball. Boy, that guy's a load. Washington can't even slow him down. Brown scores. It's back to just 10 points. Then just when you thought it was over, Washington with the football, they turn it over. Look at this. Purdue comes up with the ball. Big mistake. Purdue can celebrate now, but they couldn't do anything off the turnover. And it's Washington who ends up winning at 34 to 24. Earlier we showed you the highlights. Here are the scores. It was uh, Virginia Tech winning along with Michigan. South Carolina with the upset. Kansas State on top of Tennessee. And right now Oregon State beating Notre Dame. That is in the second. 
The Biggie is still ahead. The championship game on Wednesday has Oklahoma playing Florida State in the Orange Bowl. Just another ho-hum game for those Seminoles. Before. This is similar to what it was last year and the year before and the year before. I haven't seen any distractions. I haven't seen any. You know, what I look for when we practice, about all I can look for as a head coach, to sit, do you see any problems? Do you see anybody not trying? Do you see anybody slacking off? Do you see anybody that's not focused? And I haven't seen any of that. All right, that game coming up on Wednesday. A pair of former Mountain West players making some waves in the NFL. Yesterday, former New Mexico Lobo Brian Erlacher was named Defensive Rookie of the Year. Today, former Utah Ute Mike Anderson of the Broncos named the Offensive Rookie of the Year. The former Marine rushed for 1,500 yards, scored 15 touchdowns. He got his chance when Terrell Davis went out with a bad knee. The runner-up was Baltimore's Jamal Lewis. Arizona Wildcat fans and players certainly grieving with Coach Lute Olson today. His wife of 47 years, Bobby Olson, died of cancer. The coach will be away from his team for an undetermined amount of time. Utah coach Rick Majerus was admitted to a Salt Lake hospital today after suffering from chest pains. Early tests show nothing abnormal with his heart. The 52-year-old does have a history of heart problems, missing most of the 89-90 season while recovering from heart bypass surgery. All right. Wow. Hope he's all right. You bet. Thanks, right. Chris. Uh -huh. For many, New Year's Day begins with the Rose Parade. Coming up next, we'll show you highlights from that parade. Stay with us. Coming up tonight on Eyewitness News Live at 11, it's an unbelievable sight. Traffic backed up for miles on Interstate 15 southbound. See how the long trip home, or about the long trip home for New Year's partiers. And 2001 Space Odyssey was a groundbreaking movie, but now that that year is here, are we close to making the fictional film a reality? Those stories and more tonight at 11. Finally tonight, for many, it wouldn't be New Year's Day without the Tournament of Roses Parade. The 112th Rose Parade took place this morning in Pasadena, California. The parade included 52 floats, 27 equestrian units, and 24 marching bands from around the world. Each float was covered with natural products like flowers, seeds, leaves, and nuts. Newsman and author Tom Brokaw was the Grand Marshal for the parade, and the theme of it, by the way, was Fabric of America. I think uh, kind of representing... Everyone from all over the world. Yeah, and those seed floats. Interesting to see those, I guess, huh? How do you keep them together? Natural. <laughs> That's it for Eyewitness News Live at 6.30. Our next newscast is tonight at 11 o'clock. Entertainment Tonight's up next. Have a great New Year's Day night.